is Jared Horak for Today's Racing Digest.com. This is going to be my video race for the Digest, and this is going to be for Saturday, August 26, 2017. We're going to jump coasts. We usually do a Dama race, but this is Travers Week, so we're going to do the Travers from Saratoga. The 11th race from Saratoga is going to be the Grade 1 Travers Stakes, presented by Naira Betts. For three-year-olds, they're going to be traveling a mile and a quarter on the main track. The purse of this race, $1,250,000. We have the winners of all three Triple Crown races. We have a 12-horse field. Uh, let's jump right into it. But before we get into that, uh, last week on Pacific Classic Day, if you purchased my full card, uh, bingo, we, we had the pick six there. Uh, $208 worth of tickets. The pick six paid more than $20,000. We gave that out. One of our clients hit that. Uh, so it was an excellent day for Pacific Classic Day for my full cards at todaysracingdigest.com. And in last week's video, we also did the Pacific Classic, and we had collected on top there. So we went four for five uh, for the first five weeks in our Delmar videos. But now we're going to jump over to Saratoga. Uh, Cloud Computing is number one in the Travers and he's eight to one morning line. He ended up running last in the Jim Dandy. It was a disappointing effort. His big effort was in the Preakness a couple starts back when he set that perfect stalking trip. He's going to save all the ground, probably stalking moderate splits. Giuseppe the Great is number two. He's 20 to one morning line. He ended up finishing a surprising second in the Jim Dandy, but he only got a 132 final rating. And I think he's better sprinting. Uh, number three, West Coast, looks like a solid contender for trainer Bob Baffert. He won his last three starts, including the Los Alamitos Derby. And then he went, he shipped to New York before that to win the Easygoer Stakes. He certainly fits on numbers. Uh, Taprit, your Belmont Stakes winner, is your morning line favorite at 7-2. to two. Uh, But the Belmont Stakes, a lot of horses, at least seven, six or seven horses have come back and exited that Belmont Stakes. And, and it's been disappointing results so far with the ho horses exiting that race. And I think he's going to be over bet, even though he is a contender. Good Samaritan for trainer Bill Mott. Switched surfaces last time and, and rolled home in the Jim Dandy. And he's going to be trying to finish from off the pace. Gervin uh, is going to be in here at number six. He's 10 to one morning line. He's your Haskell winner. But the Haskell, the come home time, uh, they, they came home pretty slow. He came home in 25.9. I don't think that the extra distance is really going to do him any favors, but he'll try to rally from off the pace. Always Dreamy, your Kentucky Derby winner, disappointed in the Preakness, and then in the Jim Dandy, he set the pace. He weakened to finish third. He's going to try to bounce back. He should be in front in here. Uh, looking at Lee, he's 0 for 10 in turf routes, but he's hit the board six times. So if you're looking for exotics, trifectas and superfectas, he could hit the board. McCracken ended up just missing in the Jim Dandy, and then he won uh, the, the Matt Wynn at Churchill before that. His speed ratings in his last two went up, uh, but, but he's one that's going to have to need some pace help in here. IRAP, much improved for trainer Doug O'Neill, has won three of his last four starts. He didn't run well in the Kentucky Derby, but he won the Bluegrass before that, and then after the Derby, he won the Ohio Derby, and then the Indiana Derby, and he's certainly sharp right now. He should be stalking the pace. Gunavera, number 11, 20 to 1 morning line. Looks like he's best up to a mile and a 16th, because if you look at his numbers in longer races, they've gone down a bit. So I think that a mile and a quarter is probably going to be too much for him. And then number 12, Fayek for trainer Kieran McLaughlin. Lightly raced. He's only run uh, four times. Uh, he's two for two in dirt routes, and he won last time against Optional Claiming Company uh, at Saratoga. Earned a decent speed rating. He should be forwardly placed, but he's probably a bit outclassed in here. Now, my top four contenders um, in this 2017 Travers, uh, we're going to go with Always Dreaming on top. His speed ratings for the Digest, they're strong. Uh, if you go back and forget his last two starts anyway. In the Kentucky Derby, uh, he earned outstanding ratings. Pace ratings, his final rating uh, was in the 160s. Uh, before that, he won the Florida Derby. He, his pace and final ratings were both in the 150s. He looks like the lone speed in here. There doesn't seem to be a lot that can go with him. Uh, Todd Pletcher said, the combination of the heavy track in the Jim Dandy, it was a demanding, tiring track, and he only put four works in him. So he thought that he was short that day. So now second off the layoff, as the lone speed, if this track is speed favoring and he can get out there, the Derby winner can certainly go all the way. Now my second choice is going to be um, West Coast for trainer Bob Baffert. Bob Baffert has outstanding stats. His last 15 starters, he's 4 for 15. A 30-plus day layoff runner is good stats. Dirt route, he's 37%. Uh, he won the Travers last year with Arrogate. West Coast is going to stalk the pace in dirt route. Six starts, four wins in two seconds. As I said, he's sharp. His CPR rating last time was a 150. Uh, he got a 147 final rating. He got a 153 final rating in New York in his prior start. He looks like a solid contender. And Bob Baffert, Mike Smith, good combination. My third choice is going to be IRAP. As I mentioned, he's vastly improved right now. He's 8-1 to one morning line. He's got some tactical speed. 
Uh, his his uh, comprehensive performance rating last time, 152. His fire rating was a 110. That tops the field. And then he, his, his um, final rating was in the 150s. So he's one that certainly looks like uh, he could be a big threat in here, stalking the pace. And then rounding out my top four, I'm going to go with Good Samaritan. He's your best finisher. In that Jim Dandy, he finished up in 24 seconds. He can easily run past the field like he did in the Jim Dandy. He's sharp right now. He's got to win over the track in the Jim Dandy, and the Jim Dandy is typically a good prep for the Traverse. So here's how we're going to play this one. We're going to make a win wager on number seven, Always Dreaming. We're going to play an exacta, Always Dreaming, on top of number three, West Coast, number five, Good Samaritan, number 10, IRAP. Come back and play an exacta uh, with West Coast, Good Samaritan, and IRAP on top of Always Dreaming, and then a trifecta. We're going to put Always Dreaming and West Coast on top. We're going to put all in second. And then we're going to put Good Samaritan and IRAP in third. If you're interested in my full card analysis, we'll include the full card from Del Mar for Saturday, August 26th, plus all the stakes races from Saratoga. You can find that at todaysracingdigest.com. And if you're interested in this full, complete digest uh, for Traverse Day for Saratoga, you can find that in the product section at todaysracingdigest.com. That'll wrap up this week's video. We're one week, one week to go for Del Mar and Saratoga. And I'll be back with another stakes race next week.